If you have any code that needs to run on a regular basis, it's quite easy to just go into event tick and say, well, let's just print string as an example here, and we'll say hello. That's all that we need to do. Then, as we play, every frame of your game is going to be executing that code. That's fine. That works. It's not ideal, though. Partly because, and you've heard this before, relying too much on event tick is a decent indicator that you're definitely a beginner and not thinking too much about your code. But the real issue is it's just generally not necessary for a lot of things to run every frame. Some things need to run every frame, don't get me wrong. This event exists for a reason. Event tick can be fine. I've made a specific video talking about why event tick can be fine. Sometimes things need to happen every frame. A lot of things, though, don't need to happen every frame. If you, for instance, have code that checks for nearby enemies, you might be doing something like having a like, sphere overlap and then doing that on uh, the actor's location with a certain radius, let's say a thousand units, and then looping over all those and then checking if their health is over a certain amount. And you're doing all of this every frame. That starts being a problem at some point. Because if you're doing this in a very busy level, you're going to be looping over a lot of actors. And yeah, you can filter on object types. You can even filter on actor classes. That helps, but it doesn't fundamentally change the issue of this doesn't need to happen every frame. In 99% of cases, doing this 10 times a second, more than enough. If your game is running at 120 frames per second, doing this 120 times doesn't gain you anything, but it is going to make your game not run at 120 frames per second suddenly. You're going to be down to, I don't know, 70, something like that, depending on how heavy this is. So what do we do instead? We actually run this on a timer, which has a bunch of different potential benefits. So on begin play, what we can do is we can set a timer by a function name or whatever. I like to just use set timer by events because it's nice and visual and clear. There you can see we can give in how often this needs to run. So let's say once every 0.1 seconds. This is just going to run 10 times a second. Now. And it's going to run whatever event we hook up to this. So any code we put into this is going to run on that timer. Now we can say that it needs to run a maximum of once per frame. So here's the kicker. If we make this one one hundredth of a second and our game runs at 60 FPS, this is just going to be running 60 times. We're not going to be wasting any amount of resources running this more than once per frame. If our game runs at 120 frames per second, we are still saving 20 executions of whatever this code is, which are entirely unnecessary. Of course, if we're just running something 10 times a second, I would hope for you that you have more than 10 frames in a second. But if you have a bit of a lag spike or whatever, you can say, hey, it's already run this frame, we don't need to run it again. We can give it an initial start delay. So we can say this loop actually only starts about five seconds after our begin play in this case. And with some variance, we can say, well, maybe give that a second more or less sometimes, just a little bit of randomness, which is nice. And already you can see how this is so much nicer to work with, gives you so much more in terms of options than just stuffing your stuff into event tick. So let's take this print string and we put it into this instead. And now we'll see that is going to take a couple of seconds before it starts doing that. And after about five seconds, which is right about now, we didn't set it to looping. So a timer also can work as a delay, which you might be wondering, why not just use the built-in delay node? <laughs> it would be so much easier. A delay node only works in the event graph. If you, for any reason, make a function instead, it can't put a delay node into this. This is a different node set delay length. It's not a normal delay. You can, however, set a timer. Again, by event. At which point you can't make a custom event within this. So you'd need to do a create event. And then you can choose any function to run on the object that you give into it after a certain amount of time. So timers work within functions as well, where delays don't. Of course, what we're actually looking at is the fact that they can loop. So if we set them to looping, what we have is the first four to six seconds, it doesn't do anything. And then it will start printing hello once every 0.1 seconds. So far, you should probably already be sold on the fact that you should be using timers a hell of a lot more than you are. We have one more thing to go through. The return value, it gives you a timer handle. We can promote that to a variable and we can say uh, this is the hello timer. And now we have a reference to this timer, so we can do stuff with it. So we can 
do some inputs. Let's say debug e f. We can take that timer handle and we can pause the timer. We press it once. And actually, let's just do a uh, little flip flop here. The second time we can unpause the timer. Of course, you could hook up unpause to a different key or whatever. Super nice and easy. If you were to do that in event tech, you'd have a bool that you need to set to whatever value uh, at any given time. This effectively still works the same way. It's just a little nicer. And again, it doesn't run every frame. So now if we wait for it to start printing and I, uh, in a moment here, press F, it's going to stop printing out and it is paused. When I press F again, it's going to start printing things again because I unpaused it and so on and so forth. Uh, if we do a debug key for, let's do C because it's close to my cursor, we can do a lot more with timer handles. We can clear and invalidate the timer by handle. So what this does is it stops the timer and it immediately clears the handle for us as well so that we can reuse it in the future. So here, again, if we just wait a moment, I probably should set that initial start delay lower now that I've shut it off. I press C, you will see that it immediately stops, uh, but it's not going to be able to start back up because the timer has just ended. And here we have something that you just straight up do not replicate if you put stuff in event tick. In event tick, the best you can do is putting a bool on whether or not the timer is active that you can set to true or false. There's no way to say, hey, this code just isn't part of event tick anymore. Just don't even look at it anymore. That's just not something you can do. A timer, you can actually just end. You can say this timer just stops. Of course, if we do not do this in begin play, but instead on uh, a debug key, let's say T for timer, we can then restart this as well. There's an important thing here though. So you might be a little bit worried about, okay, but now that we can like manually start this timer instead of just doing it once on begin play, won't I end up with a situation if I press this twice where I get a bunch of runaway timers that are all going to be looping over each other and it's going to be much worse. And Unreal actually tries to take care of that for you. I've disabled max once per frame here, just so that you can see. Let's get the game time um, in seconds, so that we actually have a value to look at here, and print that out instead. So you can see, if I press T, it starts my 0 0.5 second long timer on a loop, and it prints every 0 0.5 seconds. If I press T again, it uh, doesn't actually change anything. It took another 0 0.5 seconds before it started up again, but it automatically just clears the previous timer that's running that same event, and you don't get the same event running parallel to each other multiple times over. Still, it is probably not a bad habit to get your timer handle and just check if this is a valid timer handle. You can use your timer handle as well to check if it is currently paused or currently active, which is quite nice to be able to do. What is important to highlight here, is because these timers don't actually run off of the actor's own tick event, what this does is under the hood, it sets this timer in a object that you usually don't interact with called the world timer manager, which is an object Unreal places in the world, hence the name, that manages time. Who would have guessed? But that means that even if I have no event tick on this actor and I go in, and I say, actually, I want this actor to not even tick at all. I don't want you to start with tick enable. It's got a bunch of components that still can tick, but this actor will now not tick, which we actually can prove if we put in an event tick and we try to print a string. If I try to print a string on event tick here, it's not going to allow me to do that because this actor now is not running event tick. And an actor not having to tick actually saves a fairly considerable amount of overhead. For a single thing, like your player character, it's not that big of a deal. But let's say you have items that spawn, that need to despawn after 60 seconds. The items otherwise don't need to do anything in event tick, so you can turn off their tick, but you can use a timer to make them despawn after 60 seconds. Alternatively, if you're making a platforming game and your coins need to do a little hop after every 10 seconds, the coins can still have their tick turned off, which if you have a lot of coins, will make a noticeable impact. And with the timer, they still can do their thing. So if I turn on this timer now, you can see it does run. Despite me not having a tick event or not running the tick event on this actor, it still can set and use timers. So this goes beyond just it is better to not use event tick too much and to get used to using timers because you can run the same code 
a little bit less. If you make smart use of timers, you can actually disable the ticks on certain actors and save a bunch of overhead if you play smart with it. Not every tick event has to be replaced with a timer, but as you've seen in this video, timers have a bunch of super useful features over just stuffing everything in tick, and it should help you learn, think about your code a little bit more critically and thinking about different solutions to a problem instead of just putting a bool in event tick and just flipping that bool to three or fours to run certain code. And a very big thank you to all my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help support the channel or get any of the project files in any of my tutorials, there's a link down below to the Patreon page to support me or alternatively as a YouTube member. My cave student tier supporters, Oiku, Earl, Monserville, Erno, and my cave digger tier supporters, Mauricio Ferrias.